Welcome to CSEC Biology, the cover page. I am Mr. Wilson and today we are doing Excel. Of course, it's the information technology series, another of our new series assisting those students who are doing IT for the CSEC examinations. If you have not yet like, share or subscribe, it is time to do so now. And when you subscribe, remember to hit that notification bell and select all so you will know as soon as there is a new publication in the lesson today we're going to be looking at naming tabs adding tabs moving tabs hiding tabs and of course we're going to explore the functions count count a count if and of course count blank if you have not yet seen some of the work we have done we will take you through some of the work we've done already we're going to start the show by looking at a dictionary that we created in excel pretty much it uses code to return answers so we're going to look here just if you look at your screen you're going to be seeing what we have done so it is instructing us please enter number code for your definition from 1 to 14 in the green cell so we up on up to the top of the screen here you're going to be seeing uh, the, the answer being reflected here and here so let's go up and we're going to choose a code so we have from code 1 to 14 let me see which one you want us to enter let me hear okay very good you want us to enter code 4 so if code 4 is in enter code 4 and there it is saying that we're looking for column let's go down and see what it is saying down here wow it gives us the definition of columns run vertically let's try something else now that you've seen that what about 13 let's try 13 all right so we're going to try 13 wow we're looking for window and again the definition is displayed right below but interestingly have you noticed that the color here has changed let's remove everything from it wow good so we have done this and you can go to our channel and observe or look at this lesson as to how to use the if function of course we will bring you up to speed with pretty much writing a dictionary like this our more complex work using excel so we're going to be looking at something else that we use the if function to do and these are pretty much basics and you could do it so pretty much when you start working with the if, if function uh, you might not be familiar how to manipulate it to get what you want so usually the result is like this at start so you're seeing false here but if I were supposed to enter one as it asks us here to input data in green cell if I were supposed to enter one false would change to I am learning the if function and we move on down to the second uh, cell there you'll observe that this is blank so this is saying false here however when we entered one it changed however this is blank and we're going to populate it as soon as we enter two there and of course you could use any number in your codes it is say, saying that i am getting better at the if function and if we go on down it is asking us here it gives us an instruction here and we're supposed to follow that we enter three in the cell and you observe it is changing now look at this one we want to find the status of our exam so all we need to do is to enter that exam code and if my code is like 20 it will tell me that I need to reset the exam if my code is like that I would just use just some random number 60 it said that I have passed the exam and you could use just about any number and of course it will reflect whatever the system is programmed to reflect we could put zero in and it said that reset and if we were supposed to put in 99 it would say that we pass now the teacher could also enter a code and of course all that we've used so far are number codes but we could also use text as code and you'll observe here we are putting in vg and that's a code that the teacher will be using uh, vg enter teacher code and it says very good so the teacher would be able to write a code in excel and of course just attach that as a tag to your good work very good so we're going to be moving on to something else those are just some of the work that we have done in excel so far we have used the if, if function just to create some basics of course we could go real 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 uh, a more difficult task with this but as you go along and become more advanced we'll definitely look at that we're going to be looking at adding a sheet 
before we get into the count. So to add the sheet, all that we need to do is to just click on this plus sign and a sheet will be added. All right, to remove the sheet, all we need to do is to right click. I will just move on up here and you are going to see a many options here that you could use and just click delete and the sheet doesn't exist anymore. Then we could, of course, move a sheet. All we need to do is to hold and left mouse button and, of course, hold on to the sheet and we could move it wherever. If you observe, there's a little arrow at the top there moving. We could move it there. We could move it here. We could probably move it there. So you've seen the formula sheet. We've moved it. And then again, hold the left mouse button. Just move your cursor. And there it is. We've moved the sheet. Now, another thing that we wanted to do was, to, of course, hide the sheet. All you need to do is to right click on the sheet and click on hide and voila, no sheet. The sheet is all gone. Now, how do we find back that sheet is going to be a problem to some persons, but not at all. Just come on up, right click again and click unhide. And of course, this is the sheet that we want to unhide. It appears and this is the window here. So we click OK and the sheet is back. So all we needed to do just to click on the sheet and click unhide. And of course, it would give us which, an option to choose. If we had many sheets there that were hidden, we would get an option to choose which of the sheet we want to unhide. So we have looked at adding sheet, moving sheet, hiding sheet, deleting sheet as well. Now we're going to look at renaming sheets. So here we have the function sheet. We're going to move this one up here. Here we have the function sheet. And it, that's the sheet that we're going to be working with today. But we don't want to call the sheet function. So we're going to name the sheet uh, based on what we're doing. We're looking at the count function. So let's just put count in front. All right. And enter. And there the sheet has a new name. That was easy. Don't you think? We did. We, we were able to name sheets. We were able, able to add sheets. We are able to move sheets, we are able to hide sheets, we are able to unhide sheets, and we are able to delete sheet. That's a mass lesson you've just had. Remember, you can replay the video however many times to ensure that you master that art. We're going to be looking at the count function, and we're looking at four here. We're looking at count, count blank, count A, count if. And I'm going to be showing you two ways in order to get this function working for you. Now, there are other ways you could use, but of course, these are probably two easiest ways for most persons. All right, so here we go. We are going to be looking at what is on screen and I'll explain what's on screen and then I'm gonna get into how we got here. So this count function is used to manipulate your data set to find, uh, of course, to count for integer, to count for text, to count for blank, just to find if there is missing data or to find if you need to add data, to just to find some, anything that you want to count and find within your data set, the function is used. And of course, we're going to be giving you examples as to how it is used as we go along. So you want to stay with us as we move through Excel and explore the functions and of course, build real programs that are working with these functions. So let's look at count. So we want to look at this data set and this data set was specially designed for you. Now count will return the number of integer or the number of numbers within a data set. So we're looking, it is saying here that it is returning four numbers. So let us look. We're looking at the data set from here, from 6C6 down to C11 and you'll see it in the range here. Count, this is a function that we're using equal count and we'll open uh, parentheses there and then you have c6 colon c11 and that pretty much gives the range that we're working with if we were supposed to double click on this it would highlight the range all right so good that is something else we've just learned all right so good here we go so if you observe it it's saying that we have four numbers one number two number three four so it returns four so it tells us that we have four numbers in this data set now, when we move on down, it is working pretty much on the same range. Now, this is counting the number of blank cells in the range. So it says count blank. Now, if you observe, there's just one blank cell and it has returned one. If I were supposed to remove this, let me just remove that and show you. It would say two. 
and if you observe the data set has changed so i'm going to put back that there just did that to show you now count a is a little different what count a does it count both text and numbers all right so one person might want to say letters are a word but text rep uh, represent letters and of course words and of course numbers are what we refer to as integers so count a is counting pretty much everything that is in the cell all right so here we have one two three four five so it is saying that there are five a uh, five pretty much uh data enter in the cell range that we have what if we were supposed to enter all right so boolean we entered something there it's not a text it's not a number and of course the count a would have picked up that to say that something is in the cell so we're going to look at what these really represent now count if is a little different count if will return a value that you want to find or the number of values that you want to find here we want to find the number of five now 15 has five in it but 15 is not five so it is returning two fives no so one five here and two it won't pick up the 15 here because 15 is a a, a number set by itself if we were supposed to enter another five here then the two at the bottom here would change to three all right and if we were supposed to take that out and enter another five then you see what would happen wouldn't pick that up because now it is a text so let us just take that out totally and you'll see data set has changed all right so we'll put back that in so how do we go about doing this now all right so it is a very easy thing to do one we could write the formula equal count all right and then open bracket there and then we could just highlight the range that we want to count from all right and then close bracket there or parentheses and there we go all right it counted six numbers and the same is true here we could use equal count blank and then we're going to open the bracket there and then we'll select the data range or we could write in the data range we could write uh we could pretty much write d6 colon d11 and that would pretty much return the same result and of course, when you do that, it might be easier to type it here in the formula bar. All right, now we come on down, same thing here. Let me see if I could do that for you. So it's equal, we always precede the function with the equal sign. So it's count, it's A this time, and I'm going to write the range for you. So it's going to be C6 colon to no we're not looking working with c6 we're, <coughs> we're working with d6 so it's going to be d6 colon to d11 so you'd observe here that the column name comes first the column name comes first and then the row name comes second then we close that and of course you'd see it returning six there all right so double click and it's showing you the data set that was selected now here we want to do something that is a little more complex just a little more complex so we're going to type in the data set just the same equal count if and then we're going to put our bracket there and the range so the range we're working with is d6 colon d 11 then we're going to put a comma and we want to search for the number of how many uh, seven we have in this data set so we're going to put seven there and then we're going to close the bracket and enter it is saying that there's only one seven in the data set but let's test to see if it works so we're going to put another seven there wow and you would have observed that it has changed now you might be wondering why this six is here and these are over here it's pretty much how they were aligned in the data set to do that you just highlight them and come on here and select center or select left align or just move them as you so desire all right there we go we could move them around these are things that you could toy around with to get it right 
All right, good. So that was one way of doing it. We could also go into function, go to formula, and we could click on the function here, and we could type in count or look for count. So let's look at that. Count. Go. All right, good. See count. All right. So here it has count and it tells us what to do. Count the number of cells in a range that contain numbers. Count A. Count the number of cells in a range that are not empty. All right. And then this one here, count blank, counts the number of empty cells in a specific range of cells. And then count if will, of course, count the number of cells within a range that meet a given condition. And that we showed you earlier. We're going to show you how to use one of these. And then you could just go through and just try using them yourself. So here we go. All right. It is showing me the range there that it is counting. It is saying it's counting D C17 to D17. So it's counting horizontally. That's not what we want. We want to count in the column, not in the row. So we know that we are doing our operation. Let's look where we're doing the operation. We're doing the operation in E. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this here. Very easy to do. Backspace. And we're going to put an E there. And we're doing E6. Remember, that's where we started out. We're using E6. And we're going down to E11. All right. So it's E11. And we could just now enter, click OK. All right. Let's see if the data is correct. If the range is right. So there it highlights. That's the range that we are working with. So it's as easy as that. You could do the others. And of course, tell me in the comment how easy it was to get it done. And if it is helping you with your data set or with your SBA. So in our next lesson, we are going to be looking at setting up a car rental company where we're going to be able to select cars and of course rent the cars it will calculate the payment and penalty and interest and of course it will call for the number of cars that were rented and of course return the number of cars that is in stock thank you very much again for joining us i am mr wilson from cset biology the cover page please be reminded to like share and of course subscribe and of course visit our channel to of course take part in our many videos there biology hsb it and of course study tips again thanks much for joining see you next time